everybody, I'm back. I know it's been a while since the last vlog, but I wanted to, I had a couple things I had to take care of. Went on a little hiatus, but I want everybody to know that I'm back on track and I found a couple things in the thrill of the chase and we are going to go over them. So thank you to everybody that's emailed me, people I've talked to on the phone. Um, email me at kalazars at gmail.com. That's C-O-W-L-A-Z-A-R-S at gmail.com. Look down below, I've also got an address. So if you want to send me something in the mail, I will open it right here on this vlog. You got something you want to say to all the searchers, you want to send me something, feel free. The other thing is the vlog is going to start exploring some other treasure hunts. Um, there's some other things going on that I want to talk about, and I think you guys might find it interesting as well. You know, the Forest Fen one kind of stalls in the wintertime. So there are some other treasure hunts that are out there that we could be working on, that I'm working on. So I'm going to share what I got with you guys, and maybe we can work on it together. Okay, I say it at the end of every vlog, but I'm going to say it now because I think there's some things you guys do not want to miss out on. So hit that subscribe button right down there. Give the videos thumbs up if you like them. Remember to share them with your friends and family so they can see them too. And put comments down below. Let me know what you think. So, let's get the next vlog going. The number one question that's asked is how do you know there's an actual chest out there how do you know it's not a hoax and the answer I give is the only one I can give and that's we don't know all you can do is take Forrest Fenn's word that he did what he said he did he hid the treasure and that those nine clues in the poem will lead you to it if you can figure them out and the most important one where do warm waters hold so that's the answer you either believe them or you don't you either put in the time and look or you don't and hopefully one of us out there will actually find that chest and let everybody else know what the clues were and how they he or she solved them so that's the answer to that question is we don't there's no proof there's one picture of the chest with the gold in it which is in his book and there's some people who actually saw the chest with some things in it in his vault in his house um one of them is the author or one of the authors of the pendergast novels um, Preston, I believe his last name is Preston, he said that he saw that he saw the chest with some of the things in it in Forrest Fenn's vault, and he believes that uh, Forrest Fenn actually did what he said he did, that he actually took it out there and he hid it. So, that's the only thing I can tell you is you take your chances, and hopefully one of us will uh, will find it, and then we'll all know for sure. So another question that I've been asked is, why do you work on these treasure hunts? Why Forrest Fenn? What's your background in treasure hunts? So I just thought I'd go over real quick um, how I got into armchair treasure hunts. And I moved to Vegas in 2007. And in 2008, shortly after I moved here, this book came out, Vegas Die. It was by an author uh, that lives here in Vegas. And basically it's a murder mystery. Uh, the da a dagger is the murder weapon in the book and the author hid a dagger somewhere in Las Vegas. First person to find it and turn it into him would get $25,000. So I met the author, uh, went to some book signings and things, and uh, was invited over to his house, got to know him a little bit, and uh, I just thought it was a really neat idea. Um, it was, of course, a, a gimmick for him to sell books, but uh, I think it worked. I think he did okay. It was just a self-published book. Self-published book. Um, and one of the main clues in the book 
was this napkin right here. Supposedly if you solved that cipher, I'll use the word cipher loosely, um, it would tell you where the dagger is. And what it ended up being, the, the treasure hunt went for two years and nobody found it. So after the two years was up, he published a solution. And the dagger that we were all looking for happened to be a bookmark. A bookmark with a picture of a dagger on it. And that bookmark was in the Clark County Public Library, which was less than a mile from my apartment at the time. And um, I had actually discovered one of the clues that was the street that ran right next to the library. And I remember about 10 o'clock at night driving that street, driving right around the perimeter of that library, but I never made the connection to go inside. But even if I had, uh, it's questionable if anybody could have found the actual book that the bookmark was in. But the bookmark was in the book, and also if you pull the book out behind the book on the shelf was another bookmark that basically somebody who had read the book would realize, recognize what it was and would be able to turn it in. So after that, I was hooked. Oh, and this cipher in the back. That actually was the ISBN number of the book that the dagger was located in in the library. So thought it was a cool idea. Um, and yeah, it all started from there. Then the author came out with a second book called Captain Cooked. And this book was set in Hawaii. And he also hid a weapon that was in the book, a war club. And it was hidden somewhere in Hawaii, and I can't remember what the uh, reward was if somebody found it. But to the best amount of my knowledge, nobody did find it. Um, the time ran out. Um, I kind of read the book, started to research a little bit on the internet, but knew I wasn't actually going to make the trip to Hawaii to look. So I kind of uh, stopped searching on this one. And then if anybody remembers Hidden Cash on Twitter, do you remember Hidden Cash? Do you remember the guy that hid a bunch of money in California. I think it was the Los Angeles area. And then he posted clues on Twitter and you'd find envelopes. It could have 20 bucks, it could have 200 bucks. He did it anonymously for a number, a period of time. And then finally people figured out who it was. And then things started, people started doing it all over the country. And here in, Ve in Las Vegas, I remember there was one person who did remain anonymous, but he would hide money around Las Vegas tweet out clues and I remember going to look for these uh, envelopes and uh, you know getting there five minutes after the guy that found it and it was just fun I mean if I was to ever find the Forest Fen treasure I would definitely do something similar to what Hidden Cash did on Twitter um, it was just a lot of fun I mean a lot of times the clues made sense sometimes they didn't but you could always get the general proximity like let's say it was a gas station well you had to you had 20 people frantically searching around that gas station in the bushes, uh, on the sidewalk, the trees. And I remember one time at the gas station, it was taped on the front door. <laughs> Just a, a blank uh, envelope taped on the window of the front door. And people looked for 30 minutes and nobody thought to look actually on the front door until somebody finally found it. So after that craze ended, Hidden Cash on Twitter, uh, the next thing was the Endgame series of books. Uh, if you're not familiar with Endgame, it's a trilogy of books from James Fry. You may have heard about him on Oprah. Um, I had never read any of his work before the Endgame books came out, but each book was a separate treasure hunt. The first book was called Endgame, uh, The Calling, and I worked on that one pretty hard, but these puzzles were very difficult. Um, the interesting thing about these was it was a true armchair treasure hunt. All you needed was the book, an internet connection, and a Google uh, account, a free Google account. And you would log in, and there would be a series of puzzles. And the first person to solve all the puzzles correctly got the gold. It was pretty neat because the gold coins, if I remember right, I want to say it was 250000 worth of gold coins. And they were on display in a case at Caesars Palace Casino in Las Vegas. And if you go to Google and you search Endgame Caesars Palace Gold Coins, you will see the winner actually scooping out all those gold coins, uh, the winner of Endgame. So that was the first book. Um, put a lot of time into that, but realized that I'm not smart enough to, uh, to fix those, to find those uh, clues and solve it. 
So then Endgame Part 2 came out. And I worked on that one for a little while. It's called Sky Key. That one is currently still ongoing. Hang on, I'll show you the book. Endgame Sky Key. So this is Sky Key. And this treasure hunt is currently active. There are 12 puzzles. I believe it was 12. There may be more. Um, I believe maybe half of them are solved. Um, there is an end date, which I believe might be the beginning of next year. Um, and again, uh, I don't remember the prizes on this one. I'm sure it's a cash award. I don't remember how much. But uh, yeah, end game Sky Key. Um, puzzles, very hard. Uh, I know that I'm not going to be able to solve it. So, but then, and I took a break. You know, it's good to take a break from these things. You can kind of get what I call gold fever. You get wrapped up in this stuff. And it's good to just put all the treasure hunts away, take a break. And that's what I did for a long time. And then I got back into the Forest Fen treasure hunt. And I blew up the map, if you watched my first vlog, and started to get back into it. And it's been a lot of fun. And then Endgame Book 3 came out. So this is Rules of the Game, an Endgame novel. This one just started in January of this year. This treasure hunt ends in uh, August of this year. Pretty sure it's August. It's either July or August of this year. So this one has been interesting. Same deal. All you need is the book, an internet connection, and a free Google account. You log in to the website and uh, solve a series of puzzles. And the book, the treasure hunt's been active for two months, and nobody that I know of has been able to solve the very first puzzle. This one is very hard. I was going to get into Endgame Rules of the Game, the treasure hunt that's actively going on, and the prize is $250,000 cash, but uh, the vlog's kind of getting long, and I'll just make a separate vlog on that treasure hunt. So, there's one more treasure hunt that I've been working on. It's called Breakfast Tea and Bourbon by Pete Bissonette. Uh, I have that one on Kindle, so I can't show you the book. But um, that one is $50,000 to whoever can find what the author hid. I believe it's a flute called a sulling. Um, he says if you follow the instructions in the book, it will get you within six inches of whatever it is he hid. The book is about five people that go on a treasure hunt. So he said once you find the city or general location where the treasure is hidden, if you follow the steps that the characters do in the book, it'll take you within six inches of the sulling. So that's another one. Um, I believe that is in the New Orleans, Louisiana area. So if there's anybody out there that lives in New Orleans that would like to team up and go look, um, send me an email. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll make another video on that one too. Um, Matter of fact, let's vote. The next video, what would you like to see? Hints and Thrill of the Chase, End Game, Rules of the Game, Breakfast Tea and Bourbon. The, which of one of those would you like to be in the next vlog? Put it in the comments down below, and uh, whatever the winner is, that's what the next vlog will be. So I'm going to get all these videos edited and get this uploaded tonight. Today is Sunday, March 12th. And, uh, yeah, I'll start working on the next vlog. Should be up by the end of the week. So I hope everybody's doing okay. I know everybody's waiting for winter to get over with and spring to get here so we can get out and find that treasure chest. Um, so until next vlog, thumbs up, subscribe, comment, shoot me an email, shoot me mail, whatever you want to do. I'll talk to you next time. Uh, who's this guy right here? Watch out. You knocked them all down again. What are you doing? <laughs>